Star Wars Episode One is super fun to watch if you loved it as a kid. It's both kick-ass and surreal. The political chat is actually understandable as an adult, and you kind of get a little invested in the manipulative ways Palpatine becomes Chancellor. The film is about just that, how the future dictator of the galaxy ended up in his position of power in his corrupt democracy before he turned it into a fascist empire. These two Jedi pick up Anakin and his future wife as they try to win Palpatine's proxy war and save the innocent defenders with the frog people. It's a banger from my childhood, and I quote almost every single line from memory. Except for one scene. One scene I can't quote because I was always asleep as a kid during it. When Qui-Gon is explaining to Anakin that the Force is actually microscopic life forms. A pseudo-scientific explanation for the Force is something that no one really asked for, but it's clearly supposed to be important, right? I was asleep, adults were angry, but hidden in here is a weird callback line. And we are symbionts with them. Symbionts? Basically, the Force's microscopic life forms work in tandem with your own cells, and together you can have power. But if you remember, Obi-Wan said this word symbionts. about Naboo and the Gungans. You and the Naboo form a symbiont circle. What happens to one of you will affect the other. You must understand this. This line ends up being the ideological resolution to the feud between the Naboo and the Gungans. So wait, is this word significant? See, normally when something appears at two different times in a screenplay, even if the scenes aren't related, it's signaling that this thing is important to the theme of the movie. But something else sticks out to me. Once you notice this connection between these two scenes, you end up noticing a weird pattern in the story and dialogue. Two Jedi. Now there are two of them. No pod is worth two slaves. Impossible to take out a second. Our two great societies. Always do there are. So much of this film is mysteriously centered on the nature of two parts to a thing working together to do something. Two Jedi, two clans within the Naboo defense, two Queen Amidala's, two Sith, a two-sided lightsaber, R2-D2, two engines of a pod racer? So this could be either a massive coincidence done by an artist overly reliant on story structure based on dichotomies, or the secret theme to a masterwork. Come on down, let's dig into the wormhole of subjectivity to find out what this could possibly be meaning. So symbionts. So in case you don't remember, Naboo is this peaceful green planet with two different intelligent species living on opposite sides of its world. Humans who have these big castles and no real military, and the Gungans, borderline racist depictions of black people. <laughs> I don't know if I can say that. The Gungans think the Naboo are really obnoxious. They think their brain's so big. And the humans are the only ones represented in the Galactic Senate. They aren't exactly on speaking terms. Palpatine is this representative of the planet, and Palpatine wants to be the Chancellor. So he gets this big business CEO to invade Naboo to create a crisis, gain sympathy from the Senate, and usurp the current Chancellor. The Gungans aren't too bothered by this invasion and assume that they'll be safe underwater, but the Trade Federation are aware of them, and when we catch up with them later, they're in hiding. This is what Obi-Wan was warning them of when he said, you and the Naboo form a symbiont circle. What happens to one of you will affect the other. You must understand this. Like it or not, they share the same planet and they will have to work together to keep it safe. Once the queen realizes this, she makes a gesture of good faith and Boss Nas loves it because the Gungans have an army. The Gungan army draws out the droids from the city and allow the humans to quietly capture the evil CEO. Working together, they triumph over their oppressors and develop a more friendly relationship. They find symbionts together and the Gungans even get to elect a representative for their half of the population. Aww. I've always loved this for Jar Jar because of what it means for him and his species. He belongs anywhere but a battlefield, so he was rejected from his warrior tribe. But his connection with Amidala brings their people together and he finds a better way to serve his people. So how's this connected to the Force? Being a Jedi is also about forming a connection, but the connection is with yourself and the universe around you. The Force is in everything, and in order to be centered, you have to do shit like meditate, confront the universe, and be one with it. The Metachlorians are another life form that lives inside your cells. You are too, and you must communicate with them in order to be centered. And a Jedi is supposed to use this centeredness to defend the innocent. Oh, it's a metaphor. It's a metaphor. I know it's a metaphor. The humans and Gungans are like cells and midichlorians. Anakin receives this lesson from Qui-Gon and then observes it happening on a macro scale. Look how many shots there are of Anakin taking it all in. The central conflict of the Phantom Menace is Anakin Skywalker's first lesson as a Jedi. Never calling attention to it, just using one word to plant the seed. But what's going on with the other twos in the movie? What about pod racers? A pod racer is a single seat powered by two wicked fast engines. The engines are connected by a big laser and they propel the seat at lightning speeds. So, if you think about it, the engines are also in symbionts. Notice how many times Anakin is having trouble because the engines are out of sync. And by balancing his racer, he overcomes the issues and can move forward. Meanwhile, Sybil 
Bulba is succeeding by disrupting one single engine in every other pod, throwing the racer off balance and killing them. Anakin wins when their pods get hooked together, and since Anakin's pod is built with less flashy designs and kept very compact, Sebulba's is the one that falls apart with it and his little hook thing breaks off. You can only win the pod race if your engines are working together. Sebulba's entire strategy is about breaking apart the other pods. Anakin's strategy is about keeping his pod together. So he wins. Two Padmes. There are two Queen Amidalas in this movie, Padme and Kira Knightley. The decoy and Padme work together to keep her safe and also keep her around to make important decisions. There's this cool subtle moment where the decoy has to make a decision and then looks to Padme who sneakily tells her what she wants. Either choice presents great danger to us all. We are brave, your highness, and I will plead our case to the Senate. It's a really clean moment. I love it. This isn't just a plot twist, though. They actually use the decoy to stop the Viceroy in the end. Padme's captured by them, and before they're all executed, the decoy pops out. The Viceroy sees her and goes, oh, this one's just a decoy. Go get her. But psych, you had her all along. These two different people, two Amidalas, working in symbionts, overthrow the invaders. See what I mean? Okay, so Darth Maul's lightsaber. He comes out of the shadows and serves as Palpatine's muscle, while Palpatine remains behind as the schemer. It's said later in the movie that always two there are. Palpy and Maul basically work in symbionts with each other to try and stop Amidala. When Maul confronts the Jedi on Naboo, he's got a double lightsaber. Perfectly balanced. This whole thing should be. What this might be showing us is how the Sith are more prepared for a big war than the Jedi are. It takes two Jedi to kill this one apprentice, after all. With having the balance of two blades, he can fend both of them off, separate them, and then murk Qui-Gon. Obi-Wan then only wins when he manages to break Maul's lightsaber, leaving him with just one blade and throwing him off balance. And he kills Maul by using his master's lightsaber, effectively using two lightsabers in a final desperate move. Do you see what I mean? Like, there's this theme going on. Two things. Two Two opposite things working together. What is this? What have I found? I don't get it. Is this like, I, this is a thing, right? This Gungan shield is made up of two parts that shoot into each other and make the shield. And then when one of them gets destroyed, that's when the Gungans start losing because the shield's gone. It's something. Can someone explain it to me? Has anyone written about this? The pod racer announcer is made up of two heads who are different people working together and they uh, provide effective commentary. Email me at benchinapen.com because I don't, I don't know what I've just found. The more I think about it, it starts to get my brain melting because isn't this what Star Wars is all about? Friends and forces working together to triumph over evil, being one with the force, two different things becoming one and are stronger together? Isn't that what all of storytelling is about? Isn't that what life is about? All of the characters have two arms, two legs, two nostrils, two eyes, two wings. All the ships have two engines, two blasters. Amidala is two dangles. There's symmetry everywhere. All we want in life is to be in harmony with the people around us that love and cherish us for who we are, and we love them for who they are. We're all striving for a better world where we can have two things coexist together and become better as, as, as a result. Is this movie about life? I, I, I watched the movie, and then something clicked, and I couldn't stop thinking about this, and now I've made this, and I don't even know if there's a conclusion. I, there's two things. The, the, themes move, the theme of the movie is two things working together, and that's balance. Is that like a yin yang thing? What have I found? There's a theme here and I love it. What's going on? That's the video, no conclusion. Here are two other Star Wars videos that I've made on my channel. I'd love to hear in the comments what you think about this connection between those scenes and the whole movie. Is, is this anything or am I just reading into it? Ugh, God, sorry, I think editing these prequel movies are like, is making my head explode or something? Just pray for me.